Hello, everyone. This is Brian Turner. Just a few more minutes while we wait for the rest of the folks to join the conference. We'll be getting started. Okay, we're ready to get started. Good morning to those of you joining us from North America and for those of you joining from Europe or other parts of the world, good evening. My name is Brian Turner and I'm the Eastern Regional Sales Manager for Unify and I'll be your host for today's webinar entitled Pro A Proven Option for Migrating Your Lotus Notes Applications to the Microsoft Platform. For today's agenda, we are going to provide you a snapshot into our customers' key objectives in moving their business applications from Lotus Notes to the Microsoft Platform. Then we will discuss Unify's proven solution for migrating Lotus Notes applications called Composer for Lotus Notes, and also give a customer case study. Lastly, we'll show a demo of a real-world Lotus Notes application that was migrated to the Microsoft platform using Unify's Composer solution. Before I start, I'd like to mention that there is a toolbar at the bottom of the page for posting questions. Please make sure to use the Q&A button, not the chat button, when asking questions. This will help us manage everyone's questions from one central place. Please feel free to post questions anytime during the presentation. We've also set some time aside after the demo for a live Q&A, as we'd really like to make this webinar as interactive and informative as possible. I'd like to also take this time to introduce Suresh Kumar, our Director of Professional Services, who will be presenting the demo of the Converted Notes application. Suresh is a great resource for the demo as he has spent a lot of time working directly with many of our largest customers throughout their migration projects. Thus, Suresh has a real good understanding of the customer's environment and the challenges that they are facing. Okay, first a little bit about Unify. We're a publicly traded software company. We have a 25-year history which includes being the first company to deliver a relational database in the Unix environment. Today, the company's focus is in three core areas, relational databases, rapid application development, software tools for building business applications on both the Windows and Java platforms, and lastly, software solutions that assist companies in modernizing their legacy applications, which will be the focus of today's presentation, specifically migrating Lotus Notes applications to the Microsoft platform. Now let's cover some of the key objectives for companies looking to migrate their Lotus Notes applications to Microsoft. Throughout our engagements, we have worked closely with our customers to capture their most common key objectives in their migration projects. We have found that the most critical objective in these migration projects has been preserving the business functionality and minimizing end-user disruption through a like-for-like -like migration. To this point, recently there was a very interesting article in the Harvard Business Review that conducted a study of a successful platform migration for a large financial institution. The key important attribute for successful migration projects that came out of the study was that it's very important to try to mimic the old system's look and feel in order to speed up the end user adoption of the new platform, which validates exactly what our customers have been telling us. For any of you that would like to copy this article, just let us know and we'll send it to you after the webinar. The second most critical objective that we've captured from our customers 
was a need to have clearly defined and agreed upon metrics. Our customers tell us that they want a vendor who will do what they say they'll do. They want to follow through on the commitments that were made and delivery on the results that were promised. To ensure that this happens, they tell us that it is critical that they work with a vendor whose metrics for migration projects are clearly defined and documented. They also tell us that they want a solution that is fast, cost effective, and that exposes them to less risk than a typical rip and replace rewrite project. Finally, our customers tell us that if possible, they want to be able to leverage the existing investments that they have already made in their legacy notes environment into the new platform. They want to preserve the original efforts that went into building the existing applications that run their business today. In addition, those applications are migrated. They want to be able to extend and optimize the newly migrated applications to grow their business. Now we will jump into Unify solution for migrating Lotus Notes applications to the Microsoft platform called Composer for Lotus Notes. Composer is a software plus service engagement that delivers a like-for-like -like production to production application migration while preserving all the business logic, workflow, behavior, and look and feel of the original notes applications. The key benefits of a like-for-like -like migration are increased end user adoption, minimal disruption to your business, and most importantly, a successful transition to the Microsoft platform. Our process includes analysis and discovery phase to define the project scope, the migration itself, a Q&A phase, and lastly, testing and deployment. It's a complete end-to-end -end migration solution. We decompose and recompose the notes application on the Microsoft platform, and the key components of the complex notes application are migrated to the .NET platform. Data from the Lotus Notes application is migrated into a normalized SQL Server database. Business logic is reconstructed as c -sharp web services in Visual Studio. The user interface is transformed into SharePoint list, web parts, and ASP.NET applications. ACL security is mapped into Microsoft Active Directory services. It is important to note that every one of these steps are critical in order to accomplish a like-for-like -like migration. During the demonstration portion of this webinar, we will show you how Composer Solution addresses all four of these key areas. It is also important to mention that we take a very defined metrics-driven approach to our projects, where we ask customers to define all their key objectives and the metrics they want to use to determine success of those objectives, and then we document them. We do this to provide our customers and us a clear direction and understanding of what is required to achieve a successful migration project. We complete this exercise early in the engagement process, and it serves many purposes. Early in the process, we use this, these objectives and metrics to qualify the project in or out. If there is a customer objective we can't satisfy, we'll let them know right away. The key is we do not want to waste their time. Later in the project, we use these objectives and metrics to measure the ultimate success of the project. Although Unify is mostly known for our unique ability to migrate the most complex of notes applications, in fact, Composer is the only solution recognized by Microsoft that provides a software migration solution for the complex notes applications. It is also important to note that the Composer can handle all of the notes applications, from your most simple template applications, such as team rooms and document repositories, to your custom applications, including custom templates and document management applications, all the way to your most complex applications that have a lot of business logic, workflow, and load of script. Our customers and partners regularly tell us that it's very important for them to work with a single solution provider, one that can handle all of the notes applications. While the majority of the notes applications fall into the simple to mid-complex category, they understand that it is a small portion that fall into the complex category that usually represents the majority of the work, effort, and cost. And they want to work with a company that can manage all of this. The Composer solution also provides flexibility of using .NET or SharePoint as landing spots for the migrated notes applications. And through, and through part of our process that we call ART, we will help you make these deployment decisions.
Unified's art process, which stands for Analyze, Refine, and Target, provides our customers with an assessment of the application at the code attribute level. This unique process helps our customers refine their migration project scope so that we only migrate what is necessary and wanted in the new applications. It also helps provide our customers with data necessary to make informed decisions for targeting the best landing spot for the notes applications, either SharePoint InfoPath or ASP.NET. The benefits of this process to your migration to migration project are significant. It helps optimize the applications that are being migrated so the currently unused functionality of the original notes application will not get migrated, which helps fine tune the overall project scope. And lastly, by stripping away the unnecessary and unneeded attributes of the application before the migration, it in turn drives down the cost of the migration project. The next slide shows an example of some of the data we provide you. Here's a very useful chart that we put together for our customers. This chart shows some examples of ap application attributes that were identified in our analyzed, refined target process, or again, as we call it, ART. These attributes represent a sample list of functionality that we've identified in Lotus Notes and contrast how it migrates into SharePoint versus ASP.NET. The green check marks indicate that the attribute migrates natively into the selected platform. The yellow check marks indicate that the attribute does not migrate natively into the selected platform. These art results are instrumental in helping our customers determine which Microsoft platform should be considered when migrating their notes applications in order to accomplish a like-for-like -like migration. As you can clearly see, ASP.NET represents the most flexible platform, while SharePoint migrations are appropriate for applications where retaining the business logic and workflow is not critical and where you can leverage the out-of-the-box functionality offered by SharePoint. The rich flexibility of the Composer solution combined with our unique art process offers our customers the ability to determine how best leverage their Microsoft platform investments. What about using SharePoint for complex applications? We often get asked Sorry, we often get asked about our ability to migrate complex notes applications into SharePoint InfoPath. Composer provides you with the, with the capability to migrate your existing complex notes applications to SharePoint using SharePoint sites with web pages that reflect views, forms, and web parts. It also provides you navigation capabilities with quick links. Security is controlled through SharePoint roles via Active Directory. This solution provides you with the ability to leverage the robust SharePoint search capabilities. These SharePoint applications can be used in either WSS or MOS. Now we'll cover a case study of one of our customers using Composer to migrate their Lotus Notes applications. This customer is a large financial institution located in the Midwest with branch locations throughout the United States. The drivers originally included moving email to Exchange, while consolidating the applications on the Microsoft platform was part of their long-term strategy. This has been a very common scope with many of, our, many of the early Lotus Notes migration projects. The challenges included what's it going to cost, and what is the ROI timeframe? How long will the migration take, and what will the impact to my end users be? The customer completed an environment assessment and determined that almost two-thirds of their inventory needed to be migrated, which included a large percentage of complex mission-critical applications. It's important to note that this is actually a much higher percentage than our typical engagement. The customer wanted the flexibility to leverage SharePoint for their complex applications and still get a like-for-like -like migration to ease end-user adoption. Unify was selected as the customer's migration partner Due to Unify's metric-driven processes, fixed-fee, fixed-scope engagement, and Composer's unique ability to handle all of their applications, and most importantly, all of their key objectives. As a result, we completed a successful pilot with this bank and are currently in the process of migrating the remainder of their applications. Now we're going to jump into the demonstration 
Some things to keep in mind during this demo. Number one, we're showing you real-world notes application from a customer migration project. Be sure to note the richness and complexity of the application. We will start with the Lotus Notes application and then show the migrated application as well as the migrated code. We will address the challenges of the user interface, business logic, security, and database. Number two, this is a production-to-production -production migration. Be sure to note the like-for-like -like user interface and application functionality. We will then show migrated application as an ASP.NET application. But as noted earlier, Composer can migrate applications to both ASP.NET and SharePoint. I'll now hand over to Shresh for the demo. Thanks, Brian. Um, so just give me a minute before I switch uh, to the appropriate environments here for the demo. Just give me one second. So as part of the demonstration, uh, what I wanted to do today is um, show you uh, the Lotus Notes application itself, uh, showing you some of the complexity that's actually part of the application that we migrated uh, in terms of the uh, user interface, uh, you know, the um, uh, forms, uh, you know, the various objects that are within the forms, uh, you know, the very complex UIs, the navigations, you know, the uh, twisties uh, for the various categorized views that are in this application. And also some of the you know the rich text fields that have uh, document data in them uh, with attachments and things like that uh, that are actually migrated into a, uh, a relational uh, repository uh, for the migrated application. So what we should be seeing on the screen uh, is the notes application that we migrated. This is a, a workflow application, uh, work order application that actually allows the users to uh, enter work orders for repairs of vehicles. So this is uh, like any typical notes application. Uh, this is actually uh, using navigators to actually allow the user to uh, navigate through the various uh, parts of the application with a action bar allowing them to go to various uh, sections of the work order entry screens, uh, showing them various kinds of views. Um, uh, so for for example, in this case, uh, you know you're actually seeing. Um, work orders uh, that are uh, greater than 2,500, uh, you know, where it actually drills down into the various um, categories uh, that are actually summed up, totaled uh, with the totals of uh, not only the dollar amount, but also the counts for the various uh, work orders that are in this particular um, uh, application uh, data. Now, if I drill down into this uh, particular work order, you will actually see a, a pretty complex UI where uh, you know it actually allows the user to uh, view the information for the work order uh, based on sections uh, that are actually expanded with tabs in them. Uh, it also has uh, things like you know rich text fields uh, that are actually um, you know, part of this uh, particular application. It also has uh, you know four dependent databases that it's actually tied to you know because um, uh, all the lookup information it is actually stored uh, separate from the main database uh, that this application is uh, handling. Now let me go into uh, you know uh, one of the example uh, work orders that is in here. Uh, which has uh, you know the various uh, rich text uh, objects. So in this case, you know, there's a word document that is actually tied to the rich text field uh, on this particular work order that the user has attached. And you know you have typical things like your date controls, uh, your uh, time controls, and uh, and one of the things to keep in mind is you know we actually retain um, you know all the UI that is currently um, uh, part of the Lotus Notes application. And uh, the demonstration that I'm showing you today will actually showcase the like-for-like -like functionality, you know, where we actually uh, show you how Composer can actually migrate uh, the UI and all the various business logic that is actually behind these applications in a like-for-like -like manner uh, into the .NET uh, platform. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, in the Lotus Notes application itself. Um, but before I head on to the Microsoft uh, migrated application, uh, I also wanted to show you things like you know there's uh, picklists that actually drive uh, based on values of picklists previously selected. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and choose a equipment number where it is actually pulling up uh, you know the vehicle information for 
the number that I just entered, uh, just giving you an example of uh, you know some of the lookups that are actually happening within this application with um, you know the data uh, from the dependent databases. And uh, like I said, you know there's uh, calendar controls and things like that uh, that are part of this particular application. So I'm not going to save this record here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch uh, to the uh, migrated application and then uh, focus more on the migrated solution um, uh, from a standpoint of you know what is involved in the migration and talk a little bit about the whole art process also as uh, you know so you know that'll give you a better idea on you know how we actually target these applications to the various uh, platforms, uh, be it either .NET or you know the SharePoint uh, platforms for migration of your applications. So what you should be seeing on the screen now is a migrated application uh, using our solution. So like you can see, you know, we actually retain uh, all the various uh, navigation uh, mechanisms that are actually built into these applications. So now if I click into the all by equipment number uh, view, uh, you will actually see the same kind of uh, hierarchical categorized uh, views, uh, what you call the twisties, uh, allowing you to drill down into data. Uh, let me get into the greater than uh, 2500 um, view and you will see that we actually retain uh, you know the multi-level uh, drill downs for categorized views, um, sh also showing you the capability of you know how we handle uh, the totaling and you know the various um, style sheet uh, you know references that are coming across from the migrated uh, application. Now let me get back into the all by equipment um, uh, view here and drill down a little bit into the rich text. Um, field that I was actually showing you on the main work order form. So by default, you know, it actually retains the existing behavior of nodes where, you know, it actually gets into a read-only mode uh, and then the user actually either uses the action bar to actually get into an edit mode or just double click on the form to actually get into an edit mode. So what you should be seeing on the screen now is actually a, a work order that is actually in the edit mode. And you know you can see that we actually retain uh, all the existing uh, UI um, characteristics of the form, and also uh, you know we support things like you know your complex uh, tab-like navigation schemes that you might have on the pages uh, with. Um, uh, objects like calendar controls, uh, you know, your time controls. So we actually embed a lot of AJAX capabilities within these applications, you know, as part of the migration. Um, the reason for that is to actually, you know, better improve performance and the user experience uh, on the Microsoft um, uh, application once it's been migrated, you know, because typically, you know, .NET applications, and they have a lot of post packs, you know, we try to avoid a lot of those post packs as part of the uh, solutions uh, that we offer. So in this case, you know, you will actually see uh, here's the rich text uh, object that you're seeing and then there's the document that uh, has been migrated across. So to actually cover uh, some of the major challenges uh, that we um, address uh, as part of the migration, uh, the user interface is uh, one of the challenge and uh, that, you know, like you can see, you know, we actually do a like-for-like -like, uh, user interface um, migration for the notes um, uh, UI. Uh, the other important uh, piece is the document data itself. So the document data itself is actually migrated into a relational model uh, onto a relational database. So you have the capability to actually, um, you know, choose, uh, you know, uh, any relational uh, database that you might have within your enterprise to be the storage uh, point for the document data that is actually getting migrated from the uh, Lotus Notes application. So in this application, this is going against a SQL Server um, database in the back end, and uh, the tables and the columns and, you know, there are business rules um, uh, that are tied to, there are rules that we apply to actually creation of those uh, repositories uh, on the relational uh, side. So it's c dependent on, uh, you know, the forms that are currently within your notes applications um, and, uh, you know, the data types and the lengths of the data are all determined based on existing data that might be there or, you know, there might be a certain characteristics or attributes that are defined within the Lotus Notes environment that will help us determine those things. As far as, uh, you know, the rich text uh, fields uh, that are concerned uh, within these applications, uh, what we do is we actually migrate all the rich text um, 
uh, fields and then separate out the attachments that are actually part of the rich text fields uh, out into a blobs table. So this kind of helps us um, you know, uh, move out all the heavy attachments that are actually tied to the document data. Typically in notes, it's actually in a flat structure that's actually tied to the document itself. Now here, uh, what we do is we separate that out and then move that into a blobs table and then we use the notes ID to actually link it back and then provide the appropriate referential uh, integrity for that data uh, tied back to the document itself. So as part of the migration, we actually bring across uh, the notes ID that is part of the current uh, transactions that's in your uh, document data in the notes world. And then we also, uh, as a part of the, you know, the, the follow-on, uh, once the application has been migrated uh, and into your production environment, you know, we actually generate GUIDs uh, similar to, you know, the notes ID GUIDs uh, for you to um, keep track of the various um, notes transactions that are stored within the database. Now, let me go back uh, into um, um, uh, this particular view here and let me go through a, a creation of a new work order. I wanted to also show you things like you know the various dialog lists and pick lists that are actually uh, migrated over. So in this case, let me go ahead and choose a work location. Like you can see, the UI is exactly the same like you had you had in your notes uh, applications. So here, uh, in this application, there's a lot of business logic that is actually behind uh, these forms that actually drive the uh, user input of the work order um, as part of the process uh, for the end user. So in this case, you know it is actually filtering out the data based on the work location that was just entered. And I'm just going to go ahead and choose a equipment uh, that uh, I know that is existing in the dependent database. And uh, what it is done is it has actually gone and looked up the dependent database uh, for information um, that uh, it actually displays back onto the screen. And, uh, you know, we also provide uh, users with a, a rich text field, allowing them to utilize the capabilities of a, um, you know, a rich text editable uh, object on the form, uh, allowing them to do things like, you know, adding attachments and things like that. So, you know, we do provide support for adding attachments uh, within documents uh, as part of the migration. So, so we bring across uh, all the UI, we bring across all the business logic, and this application also has some workflow built into it. So uh, if, if your applications have a workflow built into it that is actually driven based on formula or scripting, uh, we do support all that um, you know, as part of the migration, um, and you know, that would involve things like you know, notifications that happen uh, through agents that are actually scheduled uh, as part of the application. Um, we also support um, you know, agent migration. So uh, as part of the uh, Lotus Notes application, if you have any scheduled agents or menu agents or other agents that are actually uh, part of the business logic uh, that is uh, embedded within these Notes applications, you know, we do migrate all that. The agents do get migrated uh, into a Windows service, uh, all the scheduled agents do. Uh, this is to actually leverage the Windows platform uh, uh, scheduling capabilities uh, so that you know, it is a Windows service uh, allowing you to um, you know, start and stop and have a specific user um, uh, initiate, um, you know, a uh, uh, start or stop of a Windows service uh, for the agent uh, in the Windows, Windows platform. Now, let me go switch back into a, um, into the database console. Uh, so here, what I wanted to show you is, uh, you know, the work order application that we were actually viewing and the various tables that is actually uh, in the back end um, uh, that actually is driving the, uh, the repository store and the data uh, for the application itself. So, so the work order WOF3 table that you're seeing on the screen is the work order uh, form that actually is driving the UI uh, for the entry of the entry and storage of the work order information. So, like you can see, you know, we actually capture um, or support uh, things like your readers fields, you know, your authors fields. Uh, that is actually part of the. Um, uh, database uh, so that you know we actually uh, support uh, you know security that's actually tied to the document based on readers and authors fields. Um, we also, like I was mentioning, you know bring across you know the notes ID uh, so that we could actually um, uh, maintain referential integrity for all the response docs that is actually part of the data that is actually being migrated. Uh, 
Um, and like you can see, you know, we actually uh, also bring things like the parent ID. So in case if you want to actually consolidate uh, similar looking, um, you know, databases that have uh, the same design um, in the notes world uh, into a single repository, you know, you have the option to do that. And we actually capture, you know, the uh, the database ID that is actually tied to uh, these databases um, uh, so that you know you could actually separate out the data in case uh, you want to actually do that. So here's the notes DB ID so that actually captures from which particular database this particular notes ID was um, brought into this relational uh, table. Now talking about you know the blobs table um, you know here's the blobs table where we actually have uh, you know the specific notes id that it is actually belonging to uh, the field that this blobs uh, is belonging to and the blob itself um, and what we do as part of the assembling of a rich text field during runtime is that uh, you know everything is stored um, as references uh, because uh, you you will have uh, you know attachments that's actually in line with enriched text fields so we we do uh, support uh, you know displaying data uh, as as it is currently in the notes world where uh, uh, you know the attachments are actually in line as part of the rich text field um, so so you know going forward as part of the solution you have the capability to actually do that and you know we do have uh, some amount of uh, you know constraints built into these uh, tables, uh, but then you, we have the capability as part of the solutions um, uh, engage uh, as part of the engagement where we actually work with the DBAs within your organization to actually uh, add any additional constraints as indexes or things like that. Uh, you know if 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 they are required. Now, the third important challenge as part of the migration is the whole security piece. Um, and, uh, you know, what we do bring across the ACL um, that is actually tied to the Lotus Notes database uh, for the security um, so that it, we retain all the various heights when based on, uh, you know, the security roles that are actually within the ACL. And uh, what we do as part of the uh, migration is we create an XML as part of the solution that is actually offered back to you uh, that will allow you to add groups or users uh, within those uh, particular application roles um, uh, to actually uh, leverage the existing ACL capabilities that are actually part of the, uh, you know, if it's, um, if the forms actually use heights winds or, you know, if document data is restricted based on certain roles. Uh, custom roles within the applications, you know, we do actually support all that. So uh, in this example, what I wanted to show you is we actually have a tool that will allow you to directly connect into um, any AD provider. So in this case, you know, all the security can either be mapped into Active Directory within your enterprise or if you are still using notes, you know, we have the capability to even go against notes uh, to look up, uh, you know, users and role information. So typically what the uh, developer, once the application has been migrated, would do is, you know, they would actually point to the XML that I was talking about uh, to actually get to, um, you know, the various um, uh, uh, information that has been brought over uh, from the notes world. So in this case, you know, there are all these various users that have been brought over. These are groups that are brought over from the application that I just showed. And you can actually see, you know, the various uh, access levels and the capabilities of these users or groups uh, within the particular application that we migrated. So in this case, you know, this user has uh, five different custom roles that have been defined in the ACL and the notes world that's been brought over. And, uh, you know, the tool allows you to uh, do a quick match uh, against, you know, either the SAM account name or, you know, the display name uh, within your AD environment to actually look for a match. Uh, but then it also allows you to browse through your AD environment to actually see if there are any existing uh, users and groups that are in there that actually point to, you know, your existing settings in your ACL within the notes, uh, notes world. So, you know, it kind of provides you with a great tool to actually look up AD and, um, you know, see what's in there and add the appropriate um, groups if necessary uh, as part of the migration. And uh, one of the best practices that we follow as part of the migration is like, you know, uh, typically, you know, we suggest that uh, if there are canonical names that are actually part of ACLs, you know, we try to make sure that the customer uh, realizes that, you know, moving forward, it's better to actually have uh, groups uh, defined um, and groups actually 
uh, are easy to manage within the AD environment uh, so that you can add and remove people from the groups and then you don't have to change application code to actually reflect any changes uh, within security. Uh, the other uh, you know, important piece uh, as part of the data migration is also uh, what we call our data pump. This is your uh, data pump that uh, as part of the migration we uh, install as a tool within your environment. Uh, which allows you to interact with uh, you know any uh, nodes um, uh, database and it actually picks up uh, you know the various um, documents that are in there and provides you with the capability to actually import this data into any relational table that you have created on the SQL uh, end. Uh, so this kind of provides you with a good uh, tool to uh, actually refresh your development data once you uh, you know decide to go into production and you know you would just be uh, changing the, the under, uh, underlying data for the application and not the application itself because you know once the application has been tested in a test environment you know you would just move the websites into a production environment mm. so so we have uh, we do provide you know uh, some of these uh, tools as part of the solution um, and uh, like the Brian was mentioning this is a software plus services engagement so um, anything that happens uh, as part of the migration is all done at Unify um, and you know the customers would provide um, you know Unify with the appropriate um, uh, databases uh, that is part of the migration and then um, once it's been migrated and uh, QA'd within Unify it would be then deployed back into a test environment for the users to go through UAT uh, on the you know, customer side and then move to pre-production or production environments. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to also touch here is, uh, you know, we, uh, as part of the solution, uh, what we do is, you know, all the functionality that is within these applications for um, your um, views or, you know, the form um, data that is actually being displayed as part of the existing notes application, we expose all those uh, also as web services, you know, because that's pretty critical, uh, very critical uh, as part of the offering that we provide. Uh, because uh, you know, in this uh, day and age, you know, there is a lot of enterprise apps uh, that are outside of uh, you know your Lotus Notes environment, and you would want to leverage uh, the the domain uh, expertise and knowledge that's been built into these applications over the years, and leverage some of that functionality. So we expose. Um, um, all the view functionality, uh, you know, the selects and then the form add update functionalities uh, through web services. So you could actually leverage uh, some of the Node Lotus Notes uh, functionality through, you know, any uh, you know, external applications that you might write within your enterprise. So to show you an example of that, uh, let me go ahead and uh, bring up Visual Studio here and uh, let me just switch to this solution here and uh, show you uh, you know what we expose as part of the web services piece. Just give me one second here. And you can actually see a listing of various web services that are actually offered uh, as part of this solution out of the box. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and select one of these, and then you will actually see data being returned in XML format uh, from the relational uh, databases that we create um, uh, back to the application that is actually going to be consuming these um, web services. Now to switch back into the solution and to show you a little bit about, um, uh, talk a little bit about you know, the application itself in Visual Studio. So we provide these applications um, in the .NET uh, 2.0 framework and uh, we provide them as solution files uh, for you to, uh, for the developer to uh, maintain uh, on a Visual Studio environment. So uh, you have the capability to actually use Visual Studio 2005 or 2008 uh, uh, so you have the choice to choose any, either one of them. And like you can see, you know, the um, structure of the application actually is very similar to the notes um, view, uh, tree view that you see in your designer. So you have your forms, you know, you have your various pick lists, uh, you know, various views that are actually in there. Uh, and, uh, you know, the agents, you know, agents are pretty critical as part of these uh, migrations um, and 
here is an example of an agent that has been migrated that actually has um, functionality in to look up an external uh, database um, to actually update data at, on a daily basis. And it actually sends out notifications uh, to uh, a user uh, once the update is uh, done. Now, if we look at uh, some of the, uh, you know, the work order uh, forms that I was uh, showing you, uh, you have two classes that are actually defined as part of the solution uh, files in here. One is your metadata class that actually defines the various uh, objects uh, that are that constitute the work order. So this is a class structure of the work order um, that I was um, demonstrating, and like you can see, you know, it actually describes the actual uh, fields that is part of the uh, storage uh, within the backend repository tables that we create and also the various types um, and also the display formats uh, that is actually tied to these uh, work order um, uh, objects. Now if you go into the manager class, this is what pretty much drives the whole um, uh, business logic uh, that is migrated across uh, as part of the solution. So you can see things like your computer values that are brought across, your um, heights when uh, we actually retain uh, all the various um, uh, naming conventions and uh, you know field names and things like that. That's in your notes world. So uh, if a notes developer is transitioning into an ASP.NET developer, it is very easy for them to actually. Um, uh, leverage uh, our solution to uh, you know maintain and uh, so there's very minimum uh, training that's actually required to actually read through the code and figure out where things are. So you have things like your query save, query open, and you know, all that uh, uh, add functions that we migrate. So we actually have an emulator that actually emulates uh, all the various add functions within notes um, uh, that we provide. Um, so. Uh, it's it's uh, you know very very similar to you know what you have in your notes world. Only thing is this is in C sharp, um, and uh, you know the constructs and stuff are very similar. The signatures uh, for the various add commands are uh, similar to what you have in the notes um, environment. And uh, in terms of the um, UI itself, you know you would actually be using Visual Studio to edit uh, you know the UI. Uh, for adding or you know removing uh, um, design components um, as you might choose to you know um, support your business uh, moving forward once the migration is done. Now, uh, one other thing that I wanted to touch before we get on to the Q and A session is the analyzer. Um, this is uh, you know very critical for us as part of the whole uh, methodology that we follow uh, to actually target applications to the appropriate um, platforms uh, within the Microsoft stack. And uh, by platforms, I mean either into a like-for-like like, uh, .NET. Uh, uh, application or into a SharePoint platform. Uh, like Brian was mentioning, you know, we do offer um, uh, solutions in the SharePoint um, uh, platform too, uh, you know, where we actually migrate uh, your existing um, Nifty 50 templates that you might have, like you know, your team rooms, discussion boards, um, document libraries, uh, just the data only uh, into SharePoint templates. And then we also have the capability to actually migrate um, uh, applications um, uh, that you would want uh, natively into SharePoint uh, using InfoPath web forms. Uh, but then we also provide you the capability to actually have a like-for-like -like within SharePoint where uh, we actually uh, deploy the web applications um, you know, that uh, I showed you uh, as web parts uh, into SharePoint, uh, but with a slightly different look and feel uh, in terms of you know how the pages navigate and uh, you know the quick links that are very common in a SharePoint environment. So so what you're seeing on the screen is the analyzer that we actually use to um, uh, display or get information as part of the um, uh, information gathering process uh, for estimation uh, of these uh, projects you know migration projects. So what this analyzer uh, typically does is it actually analyzes the uh, notes database and uh, brings back information with regards to the various design elements that is actually uh, tied to this particular database and provides Unify with a good understanding of you know, how many agents are in there, how many forms are in there, how many views are in there. Because the refinement part of this whole methodology process, um, you know, what we go through with the developers uh, at the customer side, uh, is to actually determine is it really required to move, you know, 15 agents that is actually part of this database into the new uh, environment on the Microsoft side? Uh, is it really required to move 50, 27 forms? Uh, 
and you know if there is any kind of uh, filtering capabilities that uh, the customer would want us to uh, you know tie to these databases so that they could drive down the costs that's actually involved in this migration so so like you can see you know it provides you a pretty good uh, view of the database itself and um, uh, if I go into one of these um, code sections you know you the develop uh, the unify at you know during review review of the nodes databases has the capability to actually see the migrated c sharp code uh, directly so that you know if there is any kind of external interfaces that is actually uh, part of this particular database you know we can actually quickly see you know if there is some unconverted code that we might have to put some additional effort in actually doing the migration so uh, one of the things uh, that we do uh, as part of this exercise is also figure out you know, if there is any kind of office automation or external integration that is actually part of these databases. And um, uh, you know, like I was mentioning, you know, we do have the capability to migrate into a SharePoint environment. Uh, what we do is we actually allow the uh, the person who is actually doing the discovery from our end to actually figure out if there is any kind of restrictions that is within this particular database that would avoid uh, us moving into a SharePoint InfoPath um, world. And we kind of expose these risks up front as, uh, before the project starts you know, so that the customer is aware of these restrictions uh, you know, in a native SharePoint environment and then uh, would either uh, have us uh, build these things uh, you know at an additional cost or you know they would build these um, in house um, as part of the uh, migration effort you know so here is an example of a click event that couldn't be translated into an infopath solution so so we actually highlight these things as part of the discovery process um, that I wanted to showcase so um, so that is a quick uh, overview of you know the demonstration um, you know so from a Lotus Notes um, environment into a .NET uh, like for like um, application that I showed and the various uh, challenges that we face you know, in terms of the data itself uh, that we've got to migrate uh, the security um, uh, the business logic the the workflow that is actually tied to these applications. Um, uh, and uh, the database structures itself that I showed you as part of you know the studio that I was uh, displaying all that information for you. So uh, just give us a minute here, and uh, you know we will uh, switch to Q and A, um, and um, you know answer any questions that you might have. So um, there are a few Q&A questions here, um, so I'll just go through the list. Um, so one of the questions was, uh, you know, um, uh, you did mention uh, 2005, uh, 2008. Uh, you know, since 2008, server actually comes with the uh, .NET 3.0. Uh, do you support 3.0? Uh, uh, we should be forward compatible, backward compatible uh, from 3.0 to 2.0. Right now, we don't have the solution um, in 3.0, but then we do have. Uh, the applications are running on server 2008 without any problems. We haven't seen any uh, issues running on 2008. The other question that we have here is um, with regards to the relational databases. Um, uh, so what, what other uh, relational databases do you support or have you supported uh, in your migrations? So, so we have uh, seen um, you know migrations to SQL Server 2005, uh, Oracle, and DB2. So those are the flavors of the relational databases that we have worked with uh, as part of the migrations. And um, that's uh, oh, there, here's another question for us. Uh, where can I download the slides for this webinar? Uh, so we will uh, provide you with the link uh, as part of the follow-up email that we'll be sending to you uh, that will have the um, uh, 
uh, link for the recording as well as uh, you know the slides uh, that were uh, shown as part of this presentation. Okay, here we have another question here. Um, can you do the pl the original environment platform assessment? A very good question, and the answer is, uh, and it's actually a very good question because not long ago we did not do that. Uh, but in fact, we can cover that now. So we do the end-to-end -end, um, the solution. We come in, we can do the platform or the environmental analysis all the way to the full production migration of the applications. We have another question. Is Composer offered as a tool? Very good question and, and one we get often. And the answer is that Composer is a service engagement, so it's a software plus service engagement. It's not offered as a tool. We use our tools to come in and finish the uh, complete migration process, but the, uh, our, our solution is not offered as a tool. It is a service engagement. So one of the questions that's in here is with regards to performance. Uh, do you find the .NET performance switching from view to view, opening a document to be better with .NET or similar or slower than native nodes? So uh, what we do as part of um, uh, you know handling performance issues is we actually use the .NET caching. Um, so uh, some of the views uh, we do have the capability to actually switch between a, a traditional um, a twisty view uh, to a uh, what they call a breadcrumb view so that we are actually going back to the server only for retrieving the appropriate uh, data sets. And then we, we, do, we haven't seen any uh, performance uh, issues as part of the solution, you know, because we have uh, dealt with applications uh, that have views that actually show uh, almost like 80,000, 90,000 uh, records as part of the view, um, you know, selection itself. Uh, so we haven't had any performance um, uh, degradation from your existing uh, you know, notes uh, uh, side. I mean, uh, obviously, granted that you know, notes is a client app, and then you have uh, client power to actually deal with the performance stuff. But uh, since this is a uh, server app that is actually deployed on uh, Windows Server, uh, you know, uh, depending on how your network uh, traffic is, and uh, you know, so those are the external uh, factors that play into some of the performance things that they are seeing with engagements. Okay, we have one last question here, and that's um, how do we engage Unify? Uh, great question, and one we'd love to hear. Um, you can engage us by, uh, if you head out to our website at www.unify.com, um, you can download the information as well as send an email off to us uh, regarding uh, giving you a call back or uh, having uh, one of us send you an email back. At the end of this presentation, also we have all our contact information on there as well, so you can give us a call and or send an email that way. Okay, in summary, um, Composer migrates all of your notes applications from the most simple template applications to your most hairy complex applications. And we do so in half the time and less cost than a redevelopment effort. Composer is a complete end-to-end -end solution that delivers a like-for-like, production-ready applications, which minimizes disruption to your business and end users. Finally, our engagements are fixed fee, fixed scope, which reduces our customers' risk and allows them to quantify their ROIs up front. Our engagements do not end, and Unify doesn't receive final payment until we've delivered on the full project scope, which includes all the customers' documented objectives and metrics. Okay, thank, folks, thanks for joining us today. And as you see on the screen right now, we have our contact information, and we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, as I said, again, thanks for joining us. Have a good day or good evening, depending on where you're calling in from, and we look forward to working with you on your migration projects.